So notice it doesn't just say um, kind of like goal setting workshop or whatever. Okay. And we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about that, why that is and how people normally set goals and why we're going to do some, we're going to do things a, a little bit, a little bit different. So welcome Joko. Um, deeper simmer can you guys um, when people join just communicate in the in the chat and let people know where to find the google doc oh, man. hi desi hi joko okay i'm just gonna keep messaging everyone so for those of you that are um in, Hi, in, Mr. Nathan. Yes. I've just looked in the chat, maybe because I joined a few minutes late. I joined after you'd posted it. So I don't know whether it has to be reposted ongoingly or whether it's just my phone. Oh, Simma just posted it. Lovely. I will be quiet. That's all good. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So what we're going to be doing is completing on 2020 and visualizing your success in 2021 and beyond. Okay, so today's outcomes are that you will be, you will let go of anything that isn't serving you in and put 2020 behind you so that you can move into 2021 with a clean slate from which you can create from the future and not from the past. And you will create your goals for, for 2021. You will create a vision for what your goals fulfilled look like and feel like so you can visualize your success and manifest your destiny. And you will be left with a roadmap for fulfilling on your goals in 2021 so you can make the money that you want, achieve the rank that you want, that you desire and create a game plan that will allow you to travel the world with your STI family and really experience the lifestyle. Okay. So part one of this session today is gonna to be about letting go of the past. And what that means is, you know, we're gonna leave who you were in the past and love who you are in the present and look forward to who you're gonna become or who you're gonna create in 2021. So I, well, we're gonna talk a little bit about why um, letting go of the past is important for goal setting and how we normally, how we normally set goals. Okay, so a lot, a lot of people, you might be thinking, you might be asking yourself, why do we need to let go of the past in order to create our vision for 20, 2021? So why don't we have some people either just put it in the chat box or you can share yourself. Why do you think that we need to let go of the past? Uh, may I share? I think it's always important to empty your cup. Uh, like we say in the metaphysical way, right? Uh, you need to clean up stuff so that there's space for something new. Uh, just like how we say, clean the clutter at home, clean your drawers, you want new clothes removed, throw the old ones away. So you make space for something new. So I think that's why it's important to like let go of the past. Awesome. Anybody else? To create something new and just be complete about what happened or didn't happen. Yeah, just feel like that, you know, to, to move forward, you just have to kind of be complete about what what happened till now. So it's it's it's, it's, it's an exercise that you can do to actually create the future powerfully more like, you know, intentionally rather than thinking, oh, you know, 
otherwise you know like for me personally i would just keep thinking this is how it should have been up till now and sometimes that just keeps playing in the mind over and over rather than living into like you know what's possible uh huh so it's like you know you just keep thinking about what should have been and that's coming from the past yeah. or you know and so i just feel like that's one of the reasons why it's important to let go of the past just like what yogesh was sharing yeah yeah and that's really great what you said because a lot of you know i feel like this time of year whether it's you know christmas time new year it's kind of full it's it's kind of a mixture of things right one is like excitement about the new year because it's a new opportunity right but it also oftentimes comes with this feeling like you should be you should be farther ahead or you should be somewhere else or you you know you 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 should be closer to your the goals that you have in your life and things like that right and it's just not it's just not an energy that will help in the creation process just like just like you said so we have to let go of the past because right the past is not in the past meaning 2020 right whether it was a great year for you or whether like a lot of people it was a difficult year it's not behind you right it is in some sense and yet it's not and the reason for that is right so if it's not in the past where is it your past isn't in the past <laughs> it's actually in your future exactly what you were just saying me like creating a roadblock or a barrier to help you from achieving what it is that you want so what is predictable right is that people at this time every year they 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 set their goals based on what you think is possible for you as you are now right which is determined by the results that you've had in the past that's the way that we operate in our normal mindset right so if we ask someone you know what are your goals for this year in your health or your financial situation or you know in usana like what's your 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 rank goals all of that stuff we immediately think back to what we created up until now and then we try to like project something based on based on that right so we're using the past to, to try to predict the future which means our past is out there in the future creating limits on what we think is possible for us right and that's just it's not a powerful way to create our goals and the result of that will be that this year will literally be just more of the same as last year. Okay? So you don't have to share this or write it in the chat or anything, but I want you to really authentically. Okay? So part of this process is um what Tony Robbins always says, right? The most important one of the most important things when you're creating goals is to be honest with yourself about the way that it is. <clears throat> don't make it worse and don't try to sugarcoat it. Right so you want to look at where you are right now in the areas that are the most important to you. And then look at you know where you were at the beginning of 2020. And just assess like where we are right now and what our goals were in the beginning of 2020 or yeah So just 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 think for yourself at the moment, okay? You don't have to write this down or anything, but just think how much has changed really in terms of like, you know, the how much you have saved, your your maybe your rank if you're in Usana, um, you know, your health, your your overall health and 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 well-being. Right? My guess is for most of us that not not a whole lot has changed. A year has gone by, but not a whole lot has changed. right and that's what that's really predictable in a lot of ways because because of the way that we set our goals in the beginning of the week, of the year so this process is actually really important you see what i mean deep yeah yeah i mean 
a lot of new stuff got created because of being intentional, but then there are results in certain areas where it's like the same thing, you know, the way it was the year before. Yeah. Yeah. And if you even to get a little bit more sort of macro on it, right, you could actually look at your um, your bank account or your overall health and fitness and look back one year, two years, three years, right? There's a really good chance that not a whole lot has changed, right? So you don't want to make that wrong. It's just that's kind of what happens when we're setting our, when we're living in this way, where our past is like always in the future and we're just living into the same stuff. Okay, so uh, what you were saying earlier, Deep, about getting complete, okay, letting go of the past, we can say it a different, a lot of different ways. But one way to think about it is in terms of forgiveness. Okay, so forgiveness is really the key to helping you create the life that you desire. Because you have to really, you have to make the decision to let go of the past if you want to move forward. Okay, reliving, reliving your painful past will poison your heart and your tomorrow. And if you look at today through the same eyes of the past, you can never see what the present moment has to offer. Okay, so if you think about life, okay, some of this stuff you, you guys may have heard before, but it's important to remember this right now as we get ready to move into a new year. Okay, so anything that you cannot accept literally controls you. You're in like a mental prison. Okay, some and, and, and said another way, whatever you resist, it persists. That's why we create more of the same. So whatever you don't let go from 2020, you will unconsciously bring it with you into 2021. And you will just create more of the same. You might want something different, but you'll create more of the same. So one of the things that you have to do is really forgive yourself for whatever you did or didn't do last year, right? Because you cannot change it, <laughs> right? It's already happened. And because it's already happened, you can't, you can't change it, right? So your only options are make it wrong or let it go and, and learn and learn from it. And then the other aspect of that is forgiving others for whatever they did or didn't do. So, the people, you know, our friends, our family, the people that we live with, you know, maybe your, maybe your, your, your mentor in this business, the people that are in your team, whatever. Forgive others for whatever they did or didn't do. And exactly what Yogesh and Deep said before, right? Whatever you don't complete, which means like, uh, just like close the book on, right? and let it go, you will repeat. Okay, so now we're gonna actually open up your, the, the Google Forms that we put into the chat box. And we're gonna take some of this uh, theoretical and we're actually gonna get, make it real. Okay, so I'm gonna, create a little timer and give everybody just a, a few moments for each question. Okay. So the first, the first question is what is one word that you would use to describe 2020? So if, those, if you guys are new, in the chat box is a Google document that you're going to be using to actually fill out today. And make sure that you make sure that you answer all the questions, guys, because when you submit it, you're going to get you're going to get an emailed copy of 
this work, okay? So you're gonna have this work to actually take with you. So what is one word that you would use to describe 2020? And not the, you know, you can, this, this doesn't have to be like the transform version, right? You want to give like, you just want to be real and be honest as possible. When it comes to like describing 2020, does it, does it mean like related to USANA or any part of life or just how the year went? Yep. Just one word that you would use to describe it. I asked, I asked Angie this the other day deep and her, her one word was dumpster fire. You know, a lot of people had challenging times. Yeah. So Bhavna, I don't know if I don't know if you heard before, but the there in the chat box is the is the Google document. So just click on that link, and what will come up is a, a series or sorry a form where you can actually write down the question the answers to these questions. Okay, so the second question is, what are the hardest things that you dealt with this year? Give two minutes. <clears throat> and again, this this part, this section is really about just the raw truth, right? You don't you want to give the transformed version or the sugar coated version, just just in reality. And don't you don't have to get this. Don't don't worry about getting this like perfect or getting it right. Just write down whatever your whatever comes to mind. Okay, ten, 10 more, 10 more seconds. Um, all of them we have to answer? Yes. In 10 seconds? What do you mean? I just gave you two minutes. There's only, two, there's only two questions, right? Oh, I've been answering all of them in the Google thingy. Okay. No, no, just, 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 just the, you're, you're going ahead. Okay. So what were, what were the highlights of 2020? Um, that question is not here. Huh? Oh yeah, I got it. Got it. Yeah, just just go, just do one at a time, and you'll be more, and you you can stay present. Deep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already like, I fast forward <laughs> to ten questions. I'm like two more seconds left. <laughs> I did the same. I was on page two already. <laughs> You know, I'm like, I'm going to come first in this. I can answer everything. <laughs> you are the favorite deep, so it's okay. <laughs> Renee likes you too. Went fast forward on this. 
<laughs> yeah, just takes, you know, take, take times and, and really, you know, you can close your eyes and think about it. What were some of the, you know, the hard things that you dealt with, some of the highlights? You know, I know when I really did this work, it's like, this is the first time I've been in America for Christmas in a really long time. So I got to spend Christmas with my parents. It snowed here on Christmas. No, white Christmas. Yeah, we had a white Christmas. So the next question is, what did you learn about yourself that surprised you? Are we supposed to be sharing this as well or just like writing? Just write it down. Okay. You, you can share if you'd like, Deep. What, what did you learn about yourself that surprised you? Or just that I can be a certified personal trainer. Great. <laughs> Actually gave the exam and studied and the words were really big. I was like, I, I don't know what they're talking about. But yeah, that was really amazing. That's awesome. That's paradigm shifting, right? Because before that, you know, being a personal trainer is not something that you identified with, right? Oh, yeah. For sure. So you prove to yourself that by focusing on something and putting in the work, you can you can be anything. Okay, and, and one one habit. that doesn't serve you, that you need to let go of? I know for myself before, before the pandemic season in, in 2020, I had not watched television or, you know, hardly anything. In like a really long time. And especially, especially in like the, the, the beginning of the pandemic and then over the Christmas time, it's like I watched whole seasons of things on Netflix and, you know. I didn't turn on my YouTube or a movie all year. Uh. Or maybe yeah. not. Well, that's not something I, that I, it's not really a habit that I had before, but you know, it's something that I did quite a bit this year. And what I, what I noticed was, what I noticed for myself when I was doing this work was it never felt like, I never felt like great about myself <laughs> after I did like a, you know, like a binge session on Netflix or whatever. You know, it didn't, it didn't leave me feeling with a sense of like joy, fulfillment, you know what I mean? Sometimes we think, oh, if I wish I had more free time so that I could do, you know, whatever. I was sharing this with Simmer yesterday and then we get that free time and we, I, in, in this case, filled it with, you know, a bunch of stuff that really didn't, it didn't serve me. And I must've put on about three kgs over the Christmas time. <laughs> So luckily we're starting our body love program on January 18th. So we can let go of that. So the next one is what habit, what's one habit that you started in 2020 that you wanna keep doing?
So the next one is, um, in what ways are you stronger than you were last year? Right, in what ways has whatever that you've had to deal with in 2020 made you stronger than you were last year? Okay, number eight, what are you most proud of that happened in 2020? Number nine, what are you most grateful for that 2020 brought to your awareness? What are some of the things that you maybe took for granted that came to your awareness in 2020 that you take them for granted? You know, I know, I know for myself, you know, Simmer and I have been apart for almost nine months, I guess now. And also just being here with my family, you know, and Deep and Simmer are both in India you know, Dan is now over in Indonesia, you know, I got really present to how much I take for granted the relationships that I have in my life. You know, I've spent almost the whole year, like, basically alone in this studio apartment here, where I am in America. So this is the work for forgiving yourself, right? So what are the what are you forgiving yourself for in 2020, right? What whatever you whatever you did or whatever you didn't do. Are we actively in this 5 seconds actually doing that forgiveness or this is what we want to forgive? Well, part of the forgiveness <sighs> process is the is the awareness of the acknowledgement of what that is. Some of it you know, you can, you can forgive here and now, you know, and some of it, you might have to, you know, it might take some time in your, you know, do, do some meditation time and really look at that for yourself. But you can bring awareness right now to whatever, whatever that is. You know, you said you were going to do X, Y, and Z. You know, like I know, I know for, I know for myself, 
you know, I started training for the Ironman and I was out running and biking every day. And then when all the, the different Ironman that I was training for, it, it canceled. And, you know, they said, oh, we're just going to open them up until next year. I really, I let that drop. And when I was doing, when I was doing this work for myself this year, I, I never, I didn't, I didn't realize how much I was, you know, I was making myself wrong for that. But when, when I'm, you know, when you're making yourself wrong for stuff, it doesn't create a space where you can just, you can start doing it again, right? All of the me making myself wrong for it is kind of, is what's in the way of getting going again. If I can let that go and just really just forgive myself, it's what happened. And just let that go. It's much more likely that I'm actually going to jump on the bike again. And I actually bought, because I did a lot, I did, I did this work already, right? And part of, part of what came from doing this work is I bought a, uh, for Christmas, I got a, one of those bike trainers. So that even if it's snowing and freezing cold outside, I can actually, you know, I have, I have the bike right here next to my, next to my bed on like this magnetic stand. What I can see for myself is that there's areas that I've known for a while that don't work, that I make myself wrong for, mm -hmm. but I also don't forgive myself for making myself wrong for them. Yeah. It's one thing yeah. to do something and know that it's not working, but then to beat yourself up about it all the time rather than changing it also doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah. So write down all, write down all those areas. It's really important. And then you might, you might actually get for yourself at some point that part of the reason why you make yourself wrong is it's a strategy that you use for not actually changing that thing. So you want to, you know, you want to forgive yourself for both of those things for, for doing it. And then also for making yourself wrong. Yeah, it's like a learned helplessness. It's exactly what it is. And the next one is, you know, who, who else are you forgiving and for what? So who are, the, who are the people that are in your life that you've been carrying grudges with? Who are you upset with right now? Who are, you know, what are the things that happened last year that you, that you haven't let go? Or beyond that, you know, the energetically in our body, in our psyche, jealousy, envy, anger, resentment. These, are not, these aren't creative energies, right? So when we carry these things along with us in life, we may not know it, but they block us. They prevent us from creating the things that we want. Okay, now, now that you've done, you know, now that we did the work before and talking about why completion is so important, why letting go is so important, why forgiveness is so important, and you've thought maybe newly about 2020, right? What's, what is one word that you can now use to describe 2020? The reason, the reason, part of the reason why I put that question in there is because, you know, when I was looking at the news or you're on social media, it's like all this negativity about, oh, this was a, such a terrible year in 2020, you know, I hate it, I hate you, or I won't be sorry to see you go and all of that stuff. You know, I think it's really important for us to understand that 
you know, in our life, it is challenges and obstacles and in, in, in these times that do make us stronger. It makes us much more resilient. It gives us the capacity to deal with, with, with challenges much more effectively. And I hope that, you know, part of doing this work, that one of the things that people recognize is that they're much, they're much stronger than they thought. They have the ability to really deal with a lot of obstacles. Okay, does anybody need any more time to finish up this section? If not, then just go ahead and hit the next the next button on the Google on the Google Doc. So just so you guys know, right? When you hit the next button, you know, these things are going to get emailed to you in the Google in, in the Google form um, the way that it's set up. Okay. So you can, you know, you can go back to this and you can write more, you can, you can write less, whatever. Um, but you will be getting the answers to these questions to you. Okay. So now we want to move into part two. Okay. Now that we've put the past back into the past, we can actually move into setting our goals, creating our visions and our intentions for 2021. Okay, so now with the past completed and 2020 really behind us, right? Not just, not just in the linear time sense, right? We're, we are in the calendar year of 2021, okay? But we put 2020 behind us in the, like Yogesh said, in the metaphysical sense, right? In reality, we could put that behind us. That means that your past is no longer, you know, out there in your future so that you can create 2020 from nothing. Okay, Yogesh said it really beautifully earlier, right? We, it, when we get rid of, for example, old clothes or we do spring cleaning, and we get rid of a lot of the stuff that's not, it's just in the way, right? It creates like a new space that we can, that we can really work with and it makes room for new things. And that creates like a blank canvas that you can paint on, right? Or an empty dream board. So if you guys, you know, maybe you've bought your dream board and you got, you've had like plans to put things on it. I just, you know, you just haven't made your goals yet or whatever. But think about an empty dream board or like, you know, deep loves painting, right? So think about what it means to have a blank canvas, right? That's, it's, it's both has nothing on it and it's also pure possibility. There's a million different paintings that could come out on that blank canvas. And that's like your life at the moment. You know? Hey, Nathan, can I add to this conversation real quick? So, um, sorry, my camera's not gonna be working because my internet's not super good. But so one of the things like when it comes to talking about past is in the future, when you're thinking about it, just just think like the, for example, uh, I'm gonna give this example. It's from Landmark, from the introduction that I used to lead, and the example is like if you here you are sitting in your office, right, and you uh, you are going to go on a holiday. If you were going to say fly to Hawaii tomorrow, and you have uh, you know, two tickets lying in your bag to fly there, but you're in your office and a whole lot of like crazy work comes up. You have like a hundred emails to reply to and all of the things that really, really irritate you. Those are, they're all there, but you're sitting here and, but you're happy 
And even though everything that irritates the hell out of you on any average normal day, but you're happy. Why? Because you have those two tickets and you know that you are going away tomorrow, right? And then fast forward two weeks, you're in Hawaii, you're in the best possible setting and you are supposed to come back the next day. Now you're in the best possible setting, but you're kind of feeling bad because you know what you're going back to. You're going back to work, you're going back to whatever it is that you do, right? So that means that a lot of times when we think that our past is making us who we are at the moment, this isn't true because if that was true, then you won't be able to be happy in those circumstances in your office and you know, vice versa in the other situation. So when you look at this example, you can see that you're in the best possible place, but you're sad because you're looking at the future from this lens of oh my God, I'm going back to my office. This is how it's going to be. This is how things are there. Like you don't actually have the freedom to think that, hey, I'm flying tomorrow to, uh, you know, to my home city. And who knows what work is going to be like next? No, because we're always, always functioning from a place of the, you know, past being in the future because we always project like, Tomorrow is going to be exactly the way that yesterday was. Tomorrow, the presentation that you do or the person that you prospect is going to re reply and respond the same way that the prospect yesterday did. And even though they are two totally different people, you, our brain is wired to just keep giving us those predictable things and and a lot of times these things create beliefs you know so if you're sitting here and you're not like totally excited just like Nathan was saying in the in the world of this possibility that you know just blank space then just consider that there like what is it that's really stopping you from feeling that excitement because whatever that is, it's a belief that's coming from your past. Now, this belief is now in your future, because unless you do something about it, unless you get completion around this belief or this thing that happened in the past, you are going to go into the future with that belief in place. And then when you go and talk to that prospect, expecting that this person is going to react the same way that the other person did yesterday, then guess what's going to happen? That's the exact thing you are going to keep creating again and again, which means your past is now in your future. Your past has happened. It's already gone. That's not happening tomorrow. But because it's happened and because we hold on to it, like it's real, like tomorrow the person that you're gonna you're gonna talk to like yesterday if someone said that oh I don't have enough money and you think oh people don't have enough money and now you have a belief that oh it's really hard to do uh what we're doing because I don't you know people find it too expensive then tomorrow when you go and talk to a prospect you're gonna be expecting that this person's gonna say I don't have enough money and sure enough that's exactly what they're gonna say and that's how your past gets, you know, lands in your future because we, our brain brings that predictability, it brings those beliefs and it, it makes us think that that's how it's going to be. But consider this year hasn't happened. So there's a lot of value in taking the time and digging deeper into this completion of 2020 and and completion of uh, even even beliefs that are coming from before that even uh, uh, you know stuff that you're holding on to that's coming from way before 2020 that could be in your future that could be you know when you look at say tomorrow hey tomorrow I'm going to be in my power hour and do something and <laughs> and you're not excited 
just stop and think like, why am I not excited about this? What's stopping me from being excited about reaching out to someone? Whatever that is, is the belief that it's time to just get it complete and just put it back in the past. Well said. Yeah, I know um, Peter Crone is is somebody that I is a is somebody that I follow, one of my sort of virtual mentors, and he calls himself the Mind Architect, and um, he always basically says, you know, the past and the future is all it's all actually happening here in your in your imagination right now, the the future's never happened and the past is already gone, so it all actually happens in your imagination, and so he was working with uh, Shaquille O'Neal, for for those of you that 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 pay attention to NBA basketball, one of the greatest players of all time. Um, but he, he was shooting like free throws. If you guys know what like foul free throws are, he was only shooting like 30% and the league average was like 70. And um, he tells this story one time where he was sitting with Shaq. He was coaching him. He was his, his mindset coach and they're sitting in the kitchen. And he was, he was saying to Shaq, you know, the, the whatever has happened into the in the past is literally just in your imagination so when he steps up to the free throw line right and he's got the ball in his hand and he's getting ready to shoot he's literally imagining all the other shots that he's missed and he's worrying about missing the shot he's worrying about you know maybe what people will think when he misses another shot so he's standing on that on that free throw and none of the shots that have happened in the past are actually happening in that moment. But because he's reliving them, he's living into a future where he's missing the shot and that this cycle just kept continuing. And he actually got him to, in that moment, got him to see the future hasn't happened yet, right? And what would it be like if you, you know, you were shooting the league average, you're shooting 70% from the, from the, from the free throw line. And he got him to really feel that, imagine what that would be like, you know, like that. And um, that year, I can't remember the exact year, but Shaq went, he didn't shoot league average, but he, his, his average went from like 34% all the way up to 60 something. And um, he said like the only, the only thing that changed was when he stopped, he stepped up to that line, he was watching, he was anticipating the ball going in. So he's visualizing it going in the basket, not visualizing missing it. Right. So our, the, 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 what we project, like Simmer said, if we project a positive outcome, it's much more likely for that thing to happen. So thanks for adding that Simmer. And and we're going to talk a little bit more about sort of how that works. Um, so that's what it means actually to create goals from the future. So what you said is perfect, Simmer. So like what she said is you're sitting in the office, right? Even though you got piles of work around you, you're excited. Why? Because in your mind, in your imagination, you know, you're sitting in Hawaii on the beach sipping a cocktail, right? So the work around you that the things that are happening in that moment right? You're living into the future on the beach. And so th it's actually being on the beach in your mind that gives you that sense of excitement and like that, right? And then you're on the beach on vacation, right? You're sitting in paradise with the Mai Tai, you know, having a little bit of a, a cocktail on the beach, or you're, you're doing your surfing, or you're fishing, or, you're, you know, whatever it is that you love doing, but you have that sort of sense of dread or anxiety, even though you're in paradise. Why? Because you're visualizing being back in the office. So that's what it means, actually, to create from the, from the future, okay? Now, now is an opportunity where we can create goals like that. Like, you can move into 2021 with excitement, if you can create a compelling vision for what you want that to look like, if you're projecting that the year that this year is going to be just more of the same, or you're bringing that fear and anxiety with you into the year, guess what? You're much more likely to create that stuff. So as Stephen Covey said, for those of you who may be familiar with the, the seven habits of highly effective people. Okay. Habit number two for Stephen Covey is always begin with the end in mind, 
Okay, so we're not going to create goals based on what we think is possible from here. So starting here and then trying to figure out what we think that we can do. Okay, we're actually going to create our, our, goal, our goals from the future. And then we can look back and figure out how we got there instead of trying to figure out how we're going to get to where we, where we are. So begin with the end in mind. So if you want to have, you know, muscles and you want to have, you know, whatever, visualize that, right? The, 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 the completed process. So you might ask yourself why, like what's the, why, why start with the end in mind? And the reason is because exactly what Simmer was saying, because your imagination can't tell the difference between something that's real and something that's imagined. Okay. So when we have, when we have like, we can, we can get fearful watching a movie, right? Why, why does that happen? Or we get really excited watching a movie, Reno. Right? Oh, why does that happen? Because the, that's, that thing is not actually happening right now, but in our imagination, our imagination thinks it's real. So we can become very fearful of things that we imagine things that we anticipate happening. Like Simmer was saying, rejection is a big one. How often do we not take steps that we know would give us the stuff that we want because we're afraid of what might happen? But it actually works in the other way as well, right? You can actually, if you get really good at visualizing the stuff that you want already in your life, then your brain can actually start relating to your goals as if they're already real. And if you can do that, you can become what Gabby Bernstein calls a, a, a super attractor. You can become a man, someone who's very powerful at manifestation because you get very good at visualizing what you want, not what you don't want. So that's how you visualize or you, or you, you man, or how manifestation works. You have to see it in your mind and believe that it's possible before you can see it in reality. I think Wayne Dyer said that you have to be, you have to believe it before you see it, right? Most people say, oh, well, I'll, you know, I'll believe it when I see it. I'll believe that it's real when, when it's already happened, but it doesn't work that way. If you're waiting to believe in something when it's already happened, it's never, it's never gonna happen. You know, all great things start in the mind first, right? If you look at Rome, all these things that we've built, right? They all started as blueprints in the mind before they became, before they became a reality. Okay, so your vision is like a GPS. You have to know where you're going before you can figure out the different ways to get there, the milestone or landmarks that are on the way. Right. So that's how you want to think about your vision is like the it's it's you have you, you have you have to start with the end in mind. So he says that begin to begin with the end in mind means to start with a clear understanding of your destination, where you're going first. OK, it means to know where you're going so that you can better understand um, where you are right now so that the steps that you take are always in the right direction. So if you think about trying to get to a, a particular destination, okay? One, you have to know where you're going, okay? Two, you have to know where you are right now, okay? Because if you put in, um, you know, that you wanna go to the mall, right? You have to know where you are in order to be able to get there. So you have to both know where you're going and then, and also where you are so that you can pick, you know, the fastest route or the route that has less traffic or whatever, right? The only way that you can figure out the right pathway is to figure out where you're going and where you are. So it looks like this, you figure out where you're going, begin with the end in mind, acknowledge where you are now, right? And then you did the work, you do the work that we did, which is clear all the clutter, release whatever's not serving you, let it go. And then you have, then from there, you can figure out where you need to go. So you need to figure out what needs to happen to get, get you from where you are to where you want to be. 
Okay, so when we're finished with this work today, you can now really create a vision board based on what you're creating today. And then after that, you know, you can really sit with whoever you work with and come up with a roadmap or a game plan for how to get there now that you have much more clear about these things. Okay, so let's actually now answer the, the next series of questions. Okay, so the first, the first question on the form is, what are three areas of your life that you wanna have a transformation this year? And these are just the areas that I, that I put in there, okay? Personal development, health and fitness, family, leadership or influence, financial, spiritual. I just feel like all these areas are important. Yeah, they're all important. I think, I think really, you know, when you do the larger work of like one year, three year, five year goals, um, I can't remember who, who it was, but they said, you know, really just focus on, you know, three dominant areas that you want to really focus on this year, because yes, you want to have, we want to have abundance in, in all areas, you know, but you can give your, you can give this year, for example, a theme, you know, like the year of, you know, fitness, spirituality, and, you know, whatever, like you can, you can give your, you can give yourself, you know, specifically things to work on. So you're not limited to that, right? So you can pick three areas and then, you know, you can set goals in the other areas as well. I just, I just finished the, the, the work with Dean Graziosi over the last two days. We did like 10 hours of trainings over the last two days. And my goals were like nine, literally there were uh, nine typed pages where, wow. we, where we took out like with the, the area of relationships, for example, like I actually, so it wasn't like, I want to have amazing relationships and I want to have new friendships and whatever. It was literally like, mom, what I want that to look like. Dad, what I want that relationship to look like. My brother, what I want that relationship. It was like really going deep and, and totally getting clear about everything that I wanted. It's, it's amazing. But you have to start from somewhere. Okay, so then write one, just one goal in each of those three areas that you want to focus on this year. And remember, you're not stuck with anything, right? This is just, a, uh, this is just sort of get the process going. If you try to, if you try to build Rome in, in, a, in, a, in a day, it doesn't work, right? So these are like, we're putting the little, little bricks in place. So your three areas and then one goal in each of the three areas. And don't overthink this guys. You know, you can have a chance to feel, you know, get to deepen this later, especially if you're working with a coach, just write down the, the first things that come to mind. Okay, so the next question is that who do you need to be in order to create these goals? Okay, and I put choose three, but you know, you, you, we found that that that's a little bit easier. Okay, so I need to, for example, I need to be uh, disciplined, courageous, and powerful, or I need to be passionate, um, persistent, and you know, whatever. And you want to write these things out like they're in the present moment. Okay, so I, I will be disciplined, courageous, and powerful. So who do you need to be in order to be the person that can create these goals?
And if you guys have any questions or you want to share something, feel free to just jump in. Okay, so the next one is what, what skills will you develop this year? Okay, so if you're thinking about your USANA um, business specifically, right, you have the seven skills, which are prospecting, inviting, presenting, following up, getting new people started right, promoting. Okay, so what skills do you need to develop this year specifically to help you reach your goals? I know in, for me in 2020, one of the skills that I really worked on that's made such a huge difference in my life is the skill of like planning. <laughs> it's not something that I've done a whole lot in my life. I've just, I'm kind of like a, a do it on the fly type of person and kind of always have been. That's been my personality. I like, I like presenting. I like public speaking. I like, you know, kind of working things out in, um, while I'm doing them. But it's always left me really limited in the results that I've gotten in my past. And um, this past year, I, I, I coached on a program where the motto of the program is plan your work and then work your plan. And I've become really like obsessed about completing tasks. And that's one skill that I'm really continuing to develop for myself is the ability to get really clear about what I want, and then come up with a clear roadmap about how to get there, and then just execute on that. And it feels amazing. And it makes me feel more like it makes me feel like I can create more. So some of the skills that I'm really working on this year are um, my presentation skills. Okay, so for those of you maybe that were in the, the training that Yogesh did with us before the beginning of the year, he gave some really amazing practical tips on how to create, um, how to create your talk. And then over the, over the, over the December, um, I, I, went to like a three day training where they talked about presentation skills and how to create really powerful presentations and how to present powerfully. And um, I found it really empowering. And so one of the things that I really want to develop as a skill this year is not just the ability to do public speaking, but how to create, how to, how to craft and create stories that are, really impactful. And then the other main thing that I'm, I really want to work on this year is um, my leadership. So for you, you know, what are the skills that you're developing that you, that, that you need, that you specifically that you want to develop this year? Okay, now let's get more specific. Okay, so in terms of the financial side of things, right? How much per month will you be earning by the end of 2021? So for those of you, you know, obviously we're here in the in in the USANA context. So um, let's create this with your USANA business, right? So how much do you want to make per month by the end of 2021 with your USANA business? And remember, we're making where we are creating our vision 
from the future already fulfilled and from possibility, not from the past. And for those of you, um, when it comes to money, right, you just want to start observing what internal, what's going on internally for you right now. Just acknowledge any resistance that might be there or any fear around setting a big number or whatever, right? Just acknowledge that that's there, right? That's part of what gets in the way of creation. Okay, so the next one is what will your rank be? by the end of 2021. And by the way, you're, you're writing this like, I will have, you know, I will, I will be making $10,000 a month in USANA. I will be a silver director. I will be a gold director like that. It's not like I wanna be or whatever. You wanna state it in the present tense. That's what it means to say, to create from the future already fulfilled. I will be, or I am. I am a solid gold director. Okay, so the next one is how many people will you personally sponsor in your USANA business this year? And if you want to break this up into customers and team members, you can do that. It's up to you. And by the way, I deep simmer, whoever I can't, I can't really see the chat. So if, if people are writing things, can you help? Okay, so the next thing is what, what incentive trips will you achieve? this year. Okay, now we're obviously we're all in different markets. Okay, and you may not be aware of what the incentive trips are in your market. So if you're not, let us know, we can help you. For Indonesia this year, the trips are um, what are the trips again for this year? It's if Athens is the Athens is the, is the Asia Pacific growth trip. And then Taiwan. 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 And what's the regional yeah. one? Oh, Maldives. Maldives. Which ones are, which incentive trips are you going on this year, Ava? Taiwan and Maldives. Awesome. Ava goes on all the trips. So you have to, that means that when you, when you make your, what's that? Your voice is breaking up. Oh, I could, can you hear? Yes. If, 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 uh, I can get my Your your voice broke up again. Uh -huh. Yeah, maybe, maybe you can, I write it. You can write it in the chat or you can send me a message as well. And you and I are gonna be working closely together this year, Ava. So 
when you put your answers here, I'm going to get the answers. So. Okay. Yeah, yeah, win, win, win. <laughs> okay, and how many people from your team will you take with you on these trips? Okay, this is really, this is a really important one to, to think about, you know, and who are the people that are going to come with you? We don't have to worry about these. So if you're, so if you guys are on the Indonesian team, we have something called the STI Champions Group, where you're going to learn how to do public speaking and to become a team player. Okay, so if you guys are interested in that, you can you can put your interest in the form. And then also uh, Mia is going to be doing this presentation tomorrow in Bahasa Indonesia. So you know if you if Bahasa works better for you, that will be happening tomorrow. So if, if you guys are interested in being part of the STI Champions group, you can say yes, no, or request more information. And the same thing with the STI leader, the Future Leaders Program. So this is a, a the Future Leaders Program is a program that I am really like fully immersed in developing right now. And it is a, it is really, it's gonna be an in-depth um, leadership training program that we're going to be putting in place this year in 2021 for people that want to learn how to lead their team, how to create duplication, how to really become a, a mentor. Um, we're going to, we're going to have a program for people. This is um, people will have to qualify for this. Okay. So there will be an application and there will be a, a qualification process, but if you want to learn more about that, um, put yes, no, or request more, more information. And then last but not least, what is one word that will describe the 2021 that you are creating for yourself? You can create, you know, you can use two words if you want. I created the, the intention that I've created this year is prosperity and abundance. I am focused on 3Xing my income this year. Okay, so one word that describes the 2021 that you're creating. Okay, so now we've created the goals and we're going to finish up by bringing it to life. Okay, so what I want everybody to do. So we're going to do a little bit of a visualization exercise, okay? So I want you to put your, close your, close your eyes and put your hand over your heart. And, you know, from the first part of today, you know, maybe 2021, had a lot of difficult, challenging times for you. Okay, so I want the first thing that I want that I want you to do is just, you know, visualize some of the challenges that you had this year. And then begin to feel what it looks like, and what it feels like to just let that drift away. Feel it, kind of the heaviness coming off of your shoulders. And whatever pain 
might still be hanging around. You can really invite that to leave. You know, maybe it served a particular purpose for you in your past. But just let your higher self or God or whatever you relate to, let them let it know that it's that that time has passed. And begin to, you know, you can take a deep breath if you want. Begin to let go. Breathe out. Any of that energy. And I want you to visualize the things that you created for yourself in 2021. Like if you, you know, whatever, whatever goals that you made for, for your physical body or whatever goals that you made for your financial situation or whatever trips that you're creating for yourself, whatever those goals are, I want you to really visualize those things being present in your life right now. You know, what visualize yourself one year from now on, on, on January 1st of 2022. And visualize what kind of difference that that has made for you and your life. You know, do you feel proud of yourself? How does that feel? You know, this year, the accomplishments that you made has allowed you to put your kids in the schools that you wanted to put them in or get them the coaches that you wanted to get them for, you know, their fitness or their, their athletic performance or their, their academic achievements, you know, being able to provide that for your kids or provide, you know, for your family in the ways that you wanted to do that. You know, maybe you're someone who is thinking about having children or you're, you're thinking about having a family, but you haven't had the kind of financial security that you want to be able to provide that to your family. I want you to visualize a year from now, you're in a position where you have that financial security for yourself. You're providing that for your family. How does that feel? How does it feel to be proud of yourself? And then the trips that you wanted to achieve for yourself this year, I want you to really visualize, you know, what does, what does the Maldives feel like? You know, wherever you're going, what does it feel? Feel the, the sand between your toes, hear the sound of the waves rustling. You know, really visualize what it's like to be there in that moment. And you want to really turn the dial up on the volume of your imagination and really get clear about the sights and the sounds of the trips that you that you want to go on. You know, if you want to go to Athens, what does it look like to be standing in the Parthenon? And who are the people that are with you on that trip? Like look around you in your mind and you can see your partner or your the people your your friends the people that you want to go on the trip with you how does that feel knowing that you provided the leadership that is required to help the people help them achieve their goals and if you have specific health conditions that you've dealt with in the past or you have particular health goals this year i want you to visualize what it feels like at the end of this year to be in that physical condition already right visualize yourself with that six pack or with those developed arms or you know whatever that is for you visualize what that looks like and what that feels like for you And whatever your goals were this year, 
I want to end this visualization exercise with going into your heart. You know, like really feel yourself in this moment, go into your heart. And I want you to say to yourself, I'm proud of you. I love you. And then I want you to say whatever it is that you want to say to yourself for next year in this moment right now. As a reminder, as we step into 2021, as you step into your vision, you remind yourself that it, it, everything that you want for yourself is already within you. You have the power, the possibility is within you right now. You have the capacity to create whatever you want. You are a powerful person. You are a powerful leader. You are a powerful parent. Brother, sister, friend. Okay. You can open your eyes, come back to the group. So I hope, I don't know if you guys have ever done visualization before, but I hope that gives you a kind of sense of the visualization that you can do, you know, and what that makes available, you know. A lot of times we get so stuck in our heads and we don't spend time in our hearts and we, and we you know, we try to figure out what we, what we think that we can do. When a lot of times if you just quiet down and you get present and you spend, you know, some time in your heart, the access, the access is here. Okay, so now what we want to do is have anybody share um, anything that opened up today or anything that you want to share as we're as we're completing. I can share. Please. So one of the things I really got is like, you know, this visualization like exercise and you know what you were, you were just talking about, about like, you know, the, like seeing it in your mind before having the end result in mind before like, you know, creating something like these are all little simple things to do. And I just feel like I procrastinate on these little things. Not like on the, like, I know exactly what my everyday process is. I will sit down here at 8 a.m. and I'm going to start working. But I just, you know, at the back of my mind, I'm like, I have more important things to do. But I just feel like that these are the things that are going to make the biggest impact. Mm -hmm. And so one thing I'm taking on is actually putting them in my schedule that's non-negotiable. So I'm actually doing these little things that are going to give me the results I really want. But at the same time, it's like, you know, you feel powerful in yourself when you, when you said yes to even the little things and you actually fulfill on them. Mm. So my vision board is right now in my head. Yeah. <laughs> I just feel like I need to put it on the, you know, the Canva or something and make it real. Mm. Like, the, like my goals, I've written them, but I've half written them. And then I just feel like, just like what you were asking in the beginning, have you written down your goals? Yes, I have. I have written some. <laughs> They're working on the others. But the thing is, just like it, it's these little bits and pieces which Im actually impact the subconscious level that I always procrastinate on. Like, you know, I'm just like, I will do it. Let me just finish my contacting session. Let me just finish my, I need to, I need to get this much work done this week. Let me just finish the actual work done. But you know, you know what I mean? So this is, these are the little things that I always like let go of. 
So that's what I want to be intentional about. I want this year to be intentional year. That that's my word for the year. Great. Intentionality. I love that. Yeah, I think it was Abraham Lincoln that said, you give me six hours to cut down a tree and I'll spend four hours sharpening my saw. You know, like so many people think they, they don't slow down and do this work in the beginning of the year, which will then have them like rocket ship into the year and really create what they want. You know, like you were saying, we just kind of move into the year and, and then without ever completing this process and then everything you know, we just get half of what we could have created. And what I loved about what you said is we do the same thing every day, right? We wake up and we just move into the day when we could actually, you know, take some time in the beginning of the day, get present, visualize what you want the day to look like, create an intention for the day. And then all the actions that you take during that day are informed with this vision that you already have in mind. So your, your power of manifestation that day, each day, can become so powerful so yeah. it's the day the year like that and i love what you said because um you want to now take your vision right this vision that you just had in your mind and in your heart right you want to take that and put it onto some sort of visual display You know, I just, you know, based on the work that I did yesterday with uh, with Dean Graziosi, I like, I started recreating my, I don't know if you guys can see that. I've, yeah. re I've recreated my vision board. I had a vision board for this year already, but I'm, I've now like, I cut out some of the stuff that was on the old one and I made that one. And then I have this one right next to my, next to my, I'm taking you into my bathroom. This is like personal. So this is my, this is my vision board that's right next to my, mirror in my sink right so i want to live life on my own terms and then i have like you know working from home this year i really really want to create the systems for sti to help people really fulfill on what they want my podcast my personal branding and then my you know my spiritual development which is something that's um really important for me you know so that's right right next to the sink in the bathroom so every day when i'm brushing my teeth it's really it's right there you know, so the vision that you guys created for yourself today, make it a reality, create a vision board, make a visual display of the things that you want, and then put them in a place where you look every day. And then use that as something that just reminds you of what it is that you're creating, because you're now present to possibility in your life, you're creating these goals. And then tomorrow or today, maybe an hour from now, something will happen that has you lose, lose that vision. Right. So you want to be able to put these things up in places in your life that remind you about your possibility, that remind you about the future that you're living into. Put these structures in place. OK, and then that's it. You just want to we now we've dreamed big. Right. We've set these goals. And now what there is to do is to take action. Right. You're. Your future fulfilled, your destiny, whatever you want to call it, is waiting for you to actually um, to make it a reality through your actions. So for, the, for those of you that are in the Indonesian market, we have the MIC call every single day, the morning inspiration call. We have the DMO every day. Um, so for those of you that are, you know, the, these are action sessions. When we do the DMO, it's simply an action session. It, it's simply an action session. You know, it doesn't have to look any particular way, but during that hour, it's an hour that we set aside every single day to be intentional about creating action and do it together as a community. So you're welcome to plug in, to plug into those things. I really invite all of you to take the goals that you've created today. You know, you're, you're going to get an email with the, with with your what you created today, just hit the submit button on your Google form. And I invite you to, to give that form to your coach or to your accountability partner or to the people that you're working with in your life and create accountability for yourself as well so that you have somebody else that's standing for your possibility when you forget um, you know, what it is that you're creating. So that's basically it for today. So thank you guys so much for coming. Um, I will, we will take, if anybody else wants to share anything, any aha, anything that they got from today, 
Um, we'd love to, to hear from you as we wrap up. Yeah, I think I'll share one quickly. Um, it was when you said that uh, instead of just writing it, say I, I will or I am. And I realized I answered everything, but I didn't write the I behind it. Mm. So I went back to the form and I started putting the eyes behind it because it's, it's taking ownership, right, mm. of you being that. And I've done that near my temple where I've written that I, I'm an Oscar winning actor and all. And I realized, oh, yeah, I've done that before. Why didn't I do it here? Mm. So it's, it's taking that ownership of the eye. So that was the, the aha thing for me. Great. Anybody else want to share anything before we complete? I really enjoyed your last exercise. I thought I, all of it was very good. A very good training and presentation. Thank you. And I really enjoyed that last exercise. The visual Maybe it's your, cal your calming tones. <laughs> I've spent this, this year has been a really, you know, like I said before, I've spent a lot of time alone this year and um, doing a lot of spiritual development and meditation and things like that. Visualization is so powerful, man. So if you take one thing into this year, really practice you know, meditation or prayer, however you spend your time. And during that time, you know, just flood yourself with these feelings and these emotions and these images of the things that you want. It's very powerful. Amazing. So inspiring. Wow. Fiscal. Fiscal. Wow. <laughs> what, is, what, what is your last name? Or what, what is your full name, Fiscal? Fiscal. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it never gets old for me. Okay. Well, thank you guys so much. I love you very much. I hope that you have a, a, a vision in your mind for what you want to create this year. And I invite everybody to share the vision that you created with yourself today with 10 people this week. Like go out there and share with people about what you're creating this year. Nothing creates more velocity when it comes to your goals than to share it with other people and to make it a reality through your language. So um, thank you so much. Um, and we will see you um, next week. Same time next week for our English training will be at 830 as, as usual. Um, and that's it. So love you guys. Have a great week. And you think you need the picture? Oh, how do I do that? Can you do that? Uh, let me just check. How do I do that? I can give it a well screenshot. I'll put it in the back. Dan, you're going to take? Yeah, I'll take one. Perfect. Nathan, talk, and then the yellow will have be around your name, around your face. Huh? <laughs> Say something, and then the we'll know that you are talking. I am talking. Perfect. <laughs> okay, one, awesome. two, three. I already took one. Give me one second. I'll take another one. Okay. Okay. One. You say one, two, three again. One, two, three. Perfect. All right. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Thank you, everyone. Happy New Year. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Nathan. Thank you guys. Thank you for this presentation. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye.